Hello. I'm doing my first new video for several months due to the coronavirus lockdown. And what I've chosen to do one on now is on nationalism. I've been prompted to do this by seeing a lot of stuff that's coming out within Scotland on Scottish nationalism, which is blindly supportive of the capitalist government of Nicola Sturgeon. And this is affecting even some people on the left. And I want to go to what nationalism actually is and why we shouldn't actually give any credence to the ideology of nationalism. So what is it? Nationalism is a form of state supporting ideology. It's a form that's specific to capitalist society. It's an idea and its function is to persuade people to be loyal to a state or a government. You have to focus in on what it's about. It's about loyalty to a state. Nationalism makes people who live in a state think of themselves as citizens of that state. So French nationalism makes people who live in the French state think they're French. And the function of French nationalism is therefore to make people who live there loyalty, loyal to whoever is the government of France at that time. Similarly, the function of British nationalism is to make people loyal to the British government. And the important point is that people who are loyal to a government, seeing it in terms of loyalty to their nation, will do what that government tells them. In order to win support, the state uses all sorts of symbols and myths. These are called national symbols or national tradition. For instance, states will have their own cloth design. It's called a national flag. On ritual occasions, people will wave these pieces of cloth in the air or they'll tie them onto poles or onto buildings. Another notion is honour. In some states, for example the USA, people look at these pieces of cloth and then they touch their chest with their hands. They call this saluting the flag. Sometimes, on such occasions, they'll sing a special song which says how great and good their nation is. And whenever people hear this song, they're supposed to stand straight up. An example of a national myth is the legend of Jeanne d'Arc. She was a poor peasant girl who allegedly heard the voice of God telling her to take up arms and drive the English out of the France. And she was burned at the stake by the English for her pains. This makes her a national martyr. Duty. Governments need nationalism to make people obey them. They use nationalism to make people think they're not just obeying a particular group of men or women, the government. It tries to persuade them that they're doing something more important. This important thing is called a person's duty to the nation. Duty has to be made out to be a very, very important thing because it often turns out to be dangerous and unpleasant. A century ago, or just over a century ago, the government decided that it was our grandfather's duty, or at least the grandfathers of people of my age, great-grandfathers of others reading, listening, to go and kill people who came from Germany. This involved putting on brown clothes, which were called the national uniform. Next, our grandfathers were told that it was their duty to obey certain men from the upper classes who were called officers. Next, these officers told them that it was their duty to walk in front of machine guns, 
which men in grey uniforms were going to aim at them. Most of them did so and got shot. Afterwards, their bodies were lined up in neat rows and white stones were put on top of them. Their bodies were given a new name. They were called Our Glorious Dead. Nationalism is something new, or at least in historical terms. The nationalist idea went along with the development of capitalism. In feudal times, people were less nationalistic. Instead of singing anthems and saluting flags, they swore allegiance to a particular person. This person was called a sovereign. People promised to obey him and fight for him. The reason nationalism has become common since the start of capitalism is that the capitalist classes in different parts of the world wanted to protect their home markets. To do this, they needed to set up capitalist governments. These governments would put up customs barriers that would protect them from foreign competition and pass various other laws that would help the development of the industry that these capitalists hope to earn, own. These governments will be made up of businessmen and other professional men, such as lawyers. In the past, kings had claimed obedience as God's representative on earth. This idea became less and less plausible with the end of feudalism. If people no longer believe that the king is God's representative, they won't believe that a government of bankers and industrialists has been sent by God some Trump supporters aside. That's why you need new gods. That's why the nationalist idea became necessary. People were to be taught that obedience to the government was their duty to the nation. By the use of songs, symbols and ceremonies, the nation was made to seem some supernatural entity, just as God had been in the past. This is well captured in a painting in the British Foreign Office of Britannia Pacificatrix, where the nation Britain is portrayed actually as a classical god. In the part of the state that is responsible for the promotion of such ideologies. What's real? What you have to realise is that nations are illusory. What really exists are governments, government machines, and the territories within which they dominate. The emperor must be clothed. His nakedness would be an embarrassment to all concerned. From a socialist standpoint, nationalism is always an illusion. There are no good or bad nationalisms. It's what Daniel DeLeon, the American socialist, called the falsest of all false paths. What then of self-determination? Well, the point is that nationalism is like a religion. It's an ideological apparatus. It's false, but lots of people believe in it. And you can't make people disbelieve in it by oppression. Oppression of a religion or a nationalist ideology by another religion or nationalist ideology only reinforces the sense of identity with it. It was for this reason, and this reason alone, that the prominent Russian socialist, Lenin, defended the right of nations to self-determination. Because any attempt to deny it merely reinforced nationalist ideology. And his aim was to promote socialist ideology, to promote class ideology.